So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be walking through the AQA GCSE Maths Foundation paper of June 2019, paper 3 which is a calculator paper. So looking at the June 2019 Foundation paper 3 paper, let's have a go through question 1. So question 1 says circle the value of the digit 2 in the answer of 5200 divided by 10. When we've got 5210 divided by 10 it basically becomes 520 and with the 2 representing 20 so it's going to be the second option. Question 2 x minus 8 plus equals 5 so all we need to do is just take the 8 over by adding 8 and 5 plus 8 is 13 which is our fourth option. Question 3 it's about improper fractions and mixed numbers so what we need to do here is convert 2 and a quarter into a mixed number how do we do that? Big number times a bit, the bottom number, which is 8, plus the top number, which is 9. So it's 9 over 4, which gives us our second option. Looking at question 4, it says, circle the expression, which means x divided by y. That's going to be our first option. And question 5 is, put these numbers in order of smallest to largest. Now, I personally would say that as it's on a calculator paper, I wouldn't bother trying to get a common denominator. What I would do is just simply do 31 divided by 40 on your calculator, which gives you a value of 0 0.775. And you've got 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75. You've got 7 tenths, which is 0 0.7 and 0.725 it's already written as a decimal so again just want to make sure that all of these have three numbers after decimal point so which one's the smallest that's going to be seven tenths which one's the next smallest that's going to be 0 0.725 what's the next smallest out of the top two it's going to be three quarters and the biggest one is 31 over 40. so looking at question six it says that josh downloads album a hopefully Eagly. A has 11 tracks, each track on A costs the same. The total cost of downloading A is £8.80. Josh also downloads album B and B has 14 tracks. So question 6A says, work out the total cost of downloading B, assume each track costs the same as track A. So for this what we need to do is work out the total cost per track. So what we're going to do here is do £8.80 divided by 11 and if I get the calculator, so £8.80 divided by 11 comes up to a cost of 80 pence. So it costs 0.880 per track. So then I want to work out the cost of 14 songs. So it's 14 times 0.8. So again, on the calculator, 14 multiplied by 0.8 and it gives me an answer of £11.20. Now moving on to question 6b, it says in fact compared to the cost of each track on A, the cost of 6 tracks on B is 5 pence more and the cost of 8 tracks on B is less than 5 pence. So, and the question is asking us to tick which of these appropriate boxes. Now if 6 tracks cost 5 pence more, then that means that 6 tracks are going to cost 85 pence. And if 8 tracks cost 5 pence less, then that means 8 tracks are going to cost 75 pence. Now if I just quickly work all of this out, so again let me just actually put it in the correct location. And I'm going to add that to 8 times 0 0.75. And let's just bung that straight into the calculator. So 0 0.85 multiplied by 6 plus 8 times 0 0.75, close the bracket, press equals, and it comes up to a total cost of £11.10, which is less, if I'm not mistaken, than our first answer, which is so. So moving on to question seven, it says that pictogram shows information about house on uh, houses on inner street. Each house has three or four bedrooms or five bedrooms. In total, how many bedrooms do each uh, do these houses have? So again, each house on a pictogram represents two. So that's going to be two, four, six, eight, nine. Then we've got ten, and then we've got three. Now what I need to do is multiply this by the number of bedrooms. 
and then what I'm going to do is work those out and then just simply add them together. So here, what we've got is we've got 9 times 3, which is 27, plus 10 times 4, which is 40, plus 3 times 5, which is 15. And again, all I then need to do is just simply add those numbers up. So I've got 27 plus 40 plus 15 equals 82. And so the answer there is 82. Moving on to question 8, it says four positive whole numbers add up to 84. One of the numbers is a multiple of 17. What uh, The other three numbers are equal. So for this, what we need to do is, first of all, now again, it's worth three marks. Now, and the question is asking us, what are the four numbers? Now, in terms of this, what you want to do is write down the, set, the multiples of 17 that are less than 84. So my first number is obviously 17. Then the next multiple, if I just press ands plus 17, so that's going to give me 34. Now, if I just keep pressing equals on the calculator, uh, it will then tell me what the other multiples are. So the next one is 51. Then it's going to be 68. And then it's going to be 85. Now, from this, what I then need to do is subtract 84 from each of these numbers. So if I then do 84 take away 17, so I'll get 84 take away 17, and that's going to give me an answer of 67. Then 84 take away 34 is going to give me 50. 84 take away 51 is going to give me 33. I think I've got my answer there. And 84 take away 68 gives me an answer of 16. Now, if that, if this is going to be one of the numbers, then what I need to do is check which of these four numbers is a multiple of three. And the only one that is, is 33. And if I divide that by three, I get 11, which means that three of the numbers are 11, and the other number is going to be 51. And again, I could write those four numbers any other formation, it doesn't really matter. It's just a case about going through and writing those four with three of them being the same. Now, with question nine, it says Jim wants to buy 10 rolls of wallpaper. He sees these prices. What is the cheapest price for the 10 rolls? Now, there's a couple of options in which I could go for. So I could go for 10 lots of the single, which is going to be 10 times £12.50, uh, which is going to come to a cost of £125. The next option I could go for is... Uh, three times the three rolls and one single, which is going to come to a cost of three times £34.50 plus £12.50, and that's going to come to a cost of, so £12.50 plus three lots of £34.50. And again, just dive this into the calculator. And that comes up to 116 pounds. So I already found a cheaper option. Or I could go for two lots of the five rolls, which is going to be 58 pounds 75 multiplied by two. So 58.75 multiplied by two on the calculator gives me an answer of 117 pounds and 50 pence. So from working out three options. I'm going to fairly assume that the cheapest price is going to be the three rolls. So here I would say that the cheapest price is going to be £116. Now looking at question 10, it says in a rectangle ABCD, triangle ABE is equilateral and triangle CDE as isosceles with C and E equaling D and E. And the question is asking us to work out the angle or the size of angle X. Now for this all I need to do is just recognize what I know about triangles and interior angles. Now, looking at angle D, we can see that this is going to be a right angle because it is a rectangle. So if this is 65, this angle here is going to be 90 take away 65, which gives me an answer of 25. Now, because that's an isosceles triangle, this angle here is also going to be 25. And then to work out what this angle here is going to be, well that's going to be 180 minus 25 minus 25 which is 130. 
the next thing to bear in mind is that angle triangle ABE, which is this top triangle here, is an equilateral triangle. Now, if that's an equilateral triangle, then all of those angles are going to be 60. So this is going to be 60, that's going to be 60, and this angle here is going to be 60. Now, one thing I do also notice is that angle E is also going to equal X because those two triangles there are the same because obviously, as it's been an isosceles, these two sides are going to be the same. And obviously that is going to be the same size as this side because they are sides of a rectangle. So that's why this uh, triangle ADE and BEC are both the same, they're both congruent. So working this out then, what I've got is that 360 equals x plus x plus 130 plus 60. So from this, what I've got is I've got 190 plus 2x equals 360. If I take the 190 over to the other side, what I end up with is that 2x equals, and it's going to be 360, take away 190, which gives me an answer of 170. And then, obviously, if I then divide that by 2, what do I get? Is I get 85 degrees. So my final answer for x is 85. Now, looking at question 11, which looks at function machines, so it says complete the number machine. So a and then something times 5 gives us 5a plus 10. Now, for this, this one's a little bit sneaky because, obviously, what I then need to do is factorize this. So the last thing I'm going to do is multiply by 5. So if I write the expression of this by factorizing it, I can see that the first thing I actually need to do is add 2. With question 11b, it says write down the output of y in terms of x. Well, here I've got x. I'm dividing by 2. Now, with algebra, we don't use division symbol. Instead, we write it as a fraction. And then I add 4, and that equals y. So my final answer here is going to be y equals x over 2 plus 4. Now, other alternatives you could have to this particular question is y equals x plus 8 over 2, which eventually would give you the same. But I would say the most common form of writing this answer would be the one that just square um, put a rectangle around. For question 12, it says the first four triangular numbers are 1, 3, 6, and 10. Write down the next triangle number. Now, a triangle number is basically where the dots form a triangle, also where the difference increases by 1. So here, looking at the next triangle after 10, so let me just quickly draw the triangle number with 10. So the next one's going to have 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so it's the second option. Question 3 then says, write down the prime numbers between 40 and 50. Well, that's going to be 41, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47 and 48, 49, and that's it. So it's just going to be 41, 43, and 47. Now with question 14, this is all about converting units. So it says in the question, in this question, use that one cubic foot is 6.23 gallons, and one cubic foot is 0 0.028 cubic meters. And the question is asking us to convert 3,115 gallons into cubic meters. So for this, what I've got to do is start with the gallons, and I need to convert that into a cubic feet. So feet cubed or FT cubed. Now, how do I do that? Well, I do that by dividing by 6.23. So on my calculator, if I just work that out, so 3115 divided by 6.23, Again, answer of 500. So from this, what that then becomes is 500 cubic feet. Now, the next thing I then need to do is then convert this into cubic meters. Now, how do I do that to convert it into cubic meters? Is well, I multiply that by 0 0.028. So if I then on my calculator do 500 multiplied by 0 0.028. I get an answer of 14. And ironic with it being question 14. So then moving on to question 15, it says circle the correct statement. So here, all I've got to do is just convert it so that they're all the same FPT, uh, F, 
dp. So I want to do is convert them all into decimal. So a third is 0 0.333 recurring and 30% is 0 0.3. So is the arrow pointing or inequality pointing at the smaller number? No, so that's not true. Here I've got 0 0.33 is equal to 0 0.30. So again, that's false. 0 0.3333 recurring is less than 0 0.30. Again, that's wrong. And so the only viable one it's going to be is the last one. Now, the question 16 says, which shape must have rotational symmetry? So here we're looking at an isosceles triangle, which looks like this. A trapezium, which can look like this, but it, no mention of what type of trapezium it could be. So it could look like this. It could also look like that. A kite and a parallelogram. Now, the only one that is guaranteed to have rotational symmetry is going to be a parallelogram. For question 17, it says that a shop sells ice cream. Each ice cream has two scoops. The possible flavors are vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, and mint. The two scoops can be the same flavor or different flavors list all the possible outcomes. Now, for this, it's all about structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with vanilla, and I'm going to have all the possible options, including another vanilla. So I've got V, 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 S, V, C, and V, M. And again, I'm just thick of V there. The next thing I'm gonna, now going to change is the first one. So now I'm going to start with strawberry. And again, I'm going to go through the order. So I've got V, S, C, M. And again, I just keep the strawberry the same. Once I've done that, that's exhausted all the strawberry first choices. The next time I move on to chocolate. So again, go through the order C, V, S, C, M. And again, C, C, C. And then for the last option, going for mint. Um, so I've got M, V, S, C, M. And then just fill the first M's. So all in all, what I've got is I've got 16 options. For question 17B, it says, in one hour, the shop sells 180 scoops of ice cream. The number of scoops of each flavor is shown in the table. And what the question is asking me to do is to draw a pie chart. Now, the first thing I need to do is calculate the angle. Now, how do I calculate the angle? Well, I do that by using the formula for frequency divided by the total frequency multiplied by 360, because there's 360 degrees in a circle. Now, one thing I do notice is that 180 now is linked to basically is half of 360. So if I then multiply each of these numbers by two, then what that should give me is this should all now add up to 360. So all I've done there is doubled them. And again, just to double make sure, let's just quickly add them together. So 90 plus 150 plus 100 plus 20 equals 360. So this actually gives me my angles of all of those ice cream flavors. Now, unfortunately, I will not be able to draw this accurately because I can't get an angle measurer. So this basically what your angle should look like or your pie chart should look like. So again, I've got vanilla. Now, it's important that you do label these angles. So 150 should look something like this there. So that's going to be strawberry. Then 50, 100 degrees is going to be just over 90 degrees. So that's chocolate. And then 20 degrees is going to be our last one, which is mint. So your diagram should look something like this. But as long as you've got these angles and you've measured them correctly using your angle measure or protractor, then that should be absolutely fine. And again, for four marks, that's just 5% of the paper for this question alone. So then moving on to our next question, which is question 18. It says, on the grid, draw an enlargement of the triangle with scale factor of a half. So what we need to do here is half the dimensions of this particular triangle. So as you can see, what I've got is I've got a base of four and a height of six. So I just need to halve those dimensions. Again, I'm going to have a base of two and a height of three. And then all I then need to do is with a ruler, is just join those lines up and that is a pretty poor attempt so let me show you some good practice of using a straight edge 
and let me just neaten this one up. And then we get another one. Shell. So now it is really, really important that you do take a bit of time with using the correct equipment when doing these types of diagrams on your maths paper. Now question 19 says simplify fully. So again, what we've got is we've got three different types of terms. So we've got A squared, we've got A's, and we've got constants, which is just numbers. So looking at the A squared, so I've got three A squared take away one A squared, which leaves me with two A squared. Then looking at the A's, I've got plus seven, plus eight, which gives me 15A. And then finally, I've got plus three, take away four, which is minus one. With 19B, factorize fully. So what I need to do first, I've got Y's and I've got numbers. So the first thing I need to do is take out the highest common factor of 24 and 20, which is gonna be four. And then the, the least smallest power of the letter, common letter, which is Y, and then open my bracket. So four times what gives you 24, that's gonna give me six. I've got one Y, but I want Y squared, so I need another Y and then minus, I've got four, but I want 20, so I need to multiply it by five, and I've got one Y outside the bracket, so I don't need another Y, so there is my final answer. The question 20, it says solve X squared equals nine, 196. Now for this, what we need to do is X equals, and it's gonna be plus minus the square root of 196, which therefore gives us an answer of that X can equal either 14 or minus 14. So here I'd write 14 or minus 14, or you can write it as plus minus 14. That should get you the two marks. Now look at it, question 21. It says to the nearest pound, John has nine pounds, and to the nearest 50 pence, Ellie has six pound 50. Work out the maximum total amount of money. So if we look at John's now, the key thing to establish is that this is an upper and lower bounds question. Now when it comes to money, there is a little bit of a little thing that you do need to be aware of. So if we look at John, now to find John, his has been rounded up to the nearest pound. So if I do one pound divided by two, that gives me 50 pence. And then all I need then to do to find John's upper and lower bounds, I need to do nine plus or minus 0 0.5 or 50 pence. So this is gonna give me a lower bound of eight pound 50 and a upper value of nine pound 50. And then with Ellie, hers has been rounded to nearest 50 pence. So 50 pence divided by two is 25 pence. So what I need to do is add and subtract 25p to six pound 50. So her lower amount is gonna be six pound 25 and her upper amount is gonna be six pounds and 75 pence. Now, one thing you do need to know is my use of inequalities. Now here, if I had £9.50, then that would be rounded up to, uh, to the nearest pound would be rounded up to £10. So here, the actual upper bound is actually going to be £9.49. And likewise for Ellie, her upper bound is actually going to be £6.74. Now, if this was continuous data, so if it was like length or weight or anything like that, then I would use that value that is for our upper bound. So, but because it's money and money is discrete because it can only be certain numbers within a given range, then we do need to actually use a bit of our common sense as to what our upper and lower bounds are going to be. So the maximum total is going to equal, I don't know why I've just put that equal sign, so let's just get rid of it. So the maximum total is going to be £9.49 plus £6.74. And if I simply work that answer out on my calculator, so we've got £9.49 plus £6.74, we get an answer of 16 pounds and 23 pence. Now, if you did write 16.25, because you realize that money wasn't discrete, then you would get two out of the three marks. But the correct answer is, in fact, 16 pounds 23. It says here is a formula, T equals N squared minus 12 over N. Work out T when N equals five. So all I've got to do is substitute N equals five. 
So it's going to be 5 squared minus 12 over 5. Now how I'm going to enter this on the calculator is exactly how it's written. So I'm going to use my fraction button. So I've got 5 squared minus, press the fraction button, 12 over 5, press equals, and it gives me an answer of 22.6. Now for question 22b it says why is t always positive when n is negative? So for this what we need to then do is look at the two components. Now when n is negative then n squared so if n is negative then n squared is always going to be positive because any negative number multiplied by itself is always going to be positive. Now here where if n is negative then 12 minus n is always negative. So here what we're then going to have and again I'll just move slightly down so what we then end up with is n squared minus 12 over n so if n is negative, what's going to happen is we're going to have a negative number, uh, sorry, a positive number, because n squared is always positive. So here we've got a positive subtracting a negative number. And two minuses make a plus. So then what we end up with is a positive plus a positive and a positive plus a positive equals a positive number. Now that does seem quite a long and lengthy explanation and again you may find other reasons to get you the two marks but as long as you've kind of substituted numbers in or you've gone through this method then that should be absolutely fine to get you the full marks. Now moving on to our next question, the question 23. What we've then got, it says that in one hour a machine can make 600 nuts or 720 bolts. At 3 p.m. the machine starts working, it makes 900 nuts and then changes to making bolts. How many bolts will the machine make at 8 p.m.? So for this what we need to work out is how much time has actually evolved. So from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. we've got a total of 5 hours. Now what we then need to do is how much time has elapsed to make 900 nuts. So 900 divided by 600 and again if I just simply put that into my calculator so 900 divided by 600 it gives me an answer of 1.5. So that's taken 1.5 hours. Now if I subtract the two time differences so 5 hours minus 1.5 hours then I'm left with three and a half hours to make the bolts. Now if they're making it at a rate of 720 bolts per hour, then in one hour plus one hour plus one hour plus half an hour. Well if one hour equals 720, then half an hour is going to equal 360. So I've got 720 plus 720 plus 720 plus 360 and again if I just stick that all into my calculator 720 plus 720 plus 720 alternatively I could have just multiplied it by 3 plus 360 it gives me a total of 2520. Now looking at question 24 it says that two solids J and K have the same density and we've been asked to complete the table so we need to find out what the volume and the density is for K and just the density for J. Now in terms of this the first thing we need to establish is what is the formula. So the formula is that density equals mass over volume. Mass is equal to density times volume and volume is equal to mass over density. So these are three formulas that I need to use. So the first thing I do is work out what the density is for J because I know the two numbers that I need for this. So to work out this number all I need to do is do 48 divided by 8 which gives me 6. Now as you can see the units are missing so I need to make sure I'm writing the units. So density is going to be and the units are going to be grams per centimeter so centimeter to the minus 3 or if you wrote 6G 
per centimeter cubed, and that's going to be absolutely fine. Now, it also says in the question that they have the same density, J and K, so this is also going to be 6G centimeter cubed, so or 6 grams per centimeter cubed. So then to work out the volume, what I then need to do is V equals mass over density, so it's going to be 78 divided by 6, and if I just get my calculator and type it in, so 78 divided by 6, equals 13 so it's going to be 13 and again don't forget the units so it's going to be centimeter cubed and looking at the mark scheme they do it will cost you a mark if you do not write the units then moving on to question 25 it says towns pq and r are connected by roads pq pr and qr the length of pr is 10 kilometers it's just been removed uh, pr is 10 kilometers longer than pq qr is twice as long as pr and the total length of the three roads is 170. Work out the length of PQ. Now for this, what we've got is we've got three roads. So let's just write down what those roads are. So we've got PQ, we've got PR, and we've got QR. Now in terms of this, it says PR is 10 kilometers longer than PQ. So if PQ is X, then PR is gonna be X plus 10. Now it also then says, so that's using this statement here, then what we then need to say is, well, looking at the next statement, is that QR is twice as long as PR. So QR is double the size of PR. So if PR is X plus 10, then QR is going to be double that, which is 2X plus 20. Now what the third statement then says is that the total length of the three roads combined is 170. So what I now need to do is add these three roads together and they all add up to 170. Now if I simplify this left hand side, what I end up with is 4x plus 30 equals 170. Then if I then go on to solve this equation, what I end up is with 100, uh, sorry, 4x, it's running out of space, so 4x equals 140. Then if I divide that by 4, end up with x equals 35 kilometers which is what x is now if the question asks me what pr is so that's going to be 35 that's going to be 45 and that's going to be 70 plus 20 which is 90 but the question is just asking me for pq so the answer is just 35 for question 26, it says Mia wants to borrow 6000 and repay it with interest after two years. She sees two offers for loans. So offer one is compound interest of 3%. Offer two is compound interest for 1% for the first year and 5% for the second year. Now for compound interest, the formula is the original amount multiplied by the decimal multiplier after the percentage increase or decrease to the power of the time so with offer one what that's going to be is six thousand multiplied by 100 percent plus three percent is 103 percent that as a decimal is 1.03 and that's going to be over two years now if i just simply type that into my calculator now i get six thousand multiplied by 1.023 uh, sorry to the power of 2 it comes up to a grand total of 6365 so 6365 and if I'm not mistaken it was 40 pence so that's how much you would have to pay back for offer 2 now what we do need to do for this one is we need to do it separately so this one well actually it doesn't so we start off with £6,000. In the first year, she pays 1% interest. So 1% plus 100 is 101. That, as a decimal, is 1.01. Then for the second year, it's then going to be 5%. So again, 100% plus 5% is 105. That, as a decimal, is 1.05. So then all I need to do is type that into my calculator. Now, another alternative to working out what offer 2 is, is to work out what the price is going to, what the loan is going to be worth after one year and then multiply that by 1.05 after so again that's going to give me 63 63 
So then all I then need to do is make a decision. Well, it says that Mia says, I will pay back the same amount because the average of 1% and 5% is 3%. Well, as you can see, is she correct? No, Mia is wrong. Uh, the actual amounts are different. The repayment amount for offer one and two are different so something along those lines but as long as you're showing working out of offer one and offer two the third mark will, will come in from will, will come from your conclusion then looking at question 27 it says here are two sets of numbers a and b it says the mean of a is in the ratio of the mean of b in the ratio of three to eight and the question is asking us to work out the value of x now for this what we need to do now i can only really work out the mean of set a so the mean of set A is going to be 200 plus 160 plus 104 plus 100 all divided by 4. Now if I type that into my calculator which is what I'm going to do now so we've got 200 plus 160 plus 104 plus 100 equals divided by 4 and it comes up to a uh, a mean of 141. So here, if I write down the mean of A to the mean of B, and if I look at the parts, which is 3 to 8, that the mean of A is 141, which therefore means that three parts of this ratio is equal to 141. So therefore, one part is going to be 141 divided by 3, which again on the calculator, 141 divided by 3 gives me a total of 47. So then what I need to do is work out what 8 parts are. So therefore, 8 parts is going to be 8 times 47. So on the calculator, 8 times 47 is 376. So the mean of these are that. So what I've got is I've got 270 plus 400 plus 483 plus 300 plus x all divided by 5 should come up to a total of 376. Now if I take the 5 over and add up all of those four amounts then what I get is and we'll just quickly work that out just so I'm not cheating so 270 plus 400 plus 483 plus 300 equals one four five three plus x equals and then we're going to do five times three seven six which equals one eight eight oh now if I take the one four five three o to the other side and just word that on the calculator one eight eight o minus one four 5, 3 equals, I get that x equals 427. So here x equals 427. Then moving on to question 28, it says a straight line has a gradient of 4 and passes through the point 523. And the question is asking us to write down the equation of the line. Now here m, which is the gradient, equals 4. So I know that value straight away. Now to find out C, what I need to do, so to find C, sub x equals 5, y equals 23, and I've got those two values from the two coordinates, and m equals 4 into y equals mx plus c. Now if I do that, what I end up with, why well, I'm actually going to substitute it into mx plus c equals y. So what I end up with is 5 times 4 plus c, if I just put that in brackets, equals 23. So 5 times 4 is 20, so 20 plus c equals 23, so therefore c equals 3. So now I've got my two values to substitute into the y equals mx plus c formula, so y equals m which is 4x plus c which is 3. Now looking at question 29, it says two sides of a triangle have lengths 13 centimetres and 27 centimetres. Which of these is a possible length of the other side? And we need to circle our answer. Now the key property with regards to sides of a triangle 
is that if you pick two sides, any two sides of that triangle, if you add them together, it's got to be bigger than the third remaining side. So looking at this, if I do 13 plus 13, is that bigger than 27? No, so that is not a viable option. If I do 13 plus 14, that gives me 27, and that's the same as the third remaining side, the side that I've not picked, so that doesn't count. If I do 13 plus 27, that's going to give me 40. Is 40 bigger than 27? Yes. If I do 27 plus 27, that's going to give me 54. Is that bigger than 13? Yes. So that is one possible option. And then looking at the fourth option, well, 13 plus 40 is 53. Is 53 bigger than 27? Yes, that works. But if I do 27 plus 40, uh, so uh, that's going to give me 67. Is that bigger than 13? Yes. But if I then do 13 plus 27, that's going to give me 40, and that's the same as 40. So that why that's not going to include. So the correct answer should be 27 centimeters. Then for question 70, it's asking that here is a right angle triangle and the question is saying use trigonometry to work out the angle of X. Now when working with trig, we need to label the sides of the triangle. So we start with the angle, which I'm going to label as theta. I then label the side. So the side opposite the right angle is H and then the side opposite theta or the angle is the opposite. So looking at this, I've got to use pick the right ratio. So which ratio uses O and H? So again, if I think of Sokotoa, or any particular rhyme that you want to think of, which formula uses O and H, it's going to be sine. So what I've got is I've got sine X equals the opposite over hypotenuse. So sine X equals 13 over 16. Now to work out the angle, to work out X, what I've got to do is I've got to use the inverse function of sine. So X equals the inverse sine of 13 over 16. So again, if I get the calculator out, which is, there it is, and I do shift sine of 13 divided by 16, close the bracket, press equals, and I get 54.3, which I'll do to one decimal place, so 54.3, and that's been rounded to one decimal place, and let me just double check to make sure that I've rounded that correctly. Now, if you were, if you're not sure about rounding, there's no, there's nothing in this question that says what you need to round it to. So to play it safe, you could just copy everything that's on your calculator. You could do it to two decimal places, you could do it three, four, five, whatever floats your boat. But as long as you state if you have rounded it to by stating what you rounded it to, then that would be absolutely fine. And that concludes this paper. Now we'll put the grade boundaries of this individual paper along with the overall grade boundaries of the three papers combined as that will accumulate to give you your final grade in the description below.